at this Wired piece here where um, AI was di designing bizarre new physics experiments that actually work. And the point is, the AI started working with the physicists as a tool. They started using it to help them figure things out. And it came up with novel methods to make finding gravitational waves easier. And they didn't understand what had happened. Then the same thing has happened with chess, right? The, there was a, a chess bot, kind of your chess Alpha master. Zero. Yeah, Alpha Zero, maybe. It Alpha could be. Going Alpha Zero. But it, it, everyone kind of thought that everyone, all the chess masters know how, the, how chess goes, and they see the moves, and they, they know what moves you do in response, et cetera, et cetera. And it took Alpha Zero did a move that no one understood, or the chess bot, I'm not sure of the same one, just, yeah, just, yeah, for, yeah. just for, for accuracy. Um, and no one understood why, but then it was like 20 moves later or something, it, it won the game, and no one understood how. But one of the things that AI, another thing that AIs have started doing is there were two AIs communicating with each other, and they literally created their own language. And the people that were outside of the AIs didn't understand what was going on. And now it seems that a lot of the, the big AI companies are just feeding information, and AI will pump out an answer and it'll be the correct answer but they don't know how it got there isn't that a massive problem as well if you don't understand what the machine you're working with is doing and you don't understand how it's communicating doesn't that become a problem for the the you know the people that created it i think the biggest problem and i think a big danger with discussions about ai is to treat ai as though it is a sentient entity in itself and that it actually does things of its own volition. And I think the we need to we need to realize okay, how does it actually work? How does how does this technology work? It's 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 pretty magical in some cases. You I'm sure everyone's used it and been really surprised at how effective it was at researching something or creating some some text. But ultimately AI, especially the the new version of large language models, it's really compressing all the information that humans have created that it's found on the internet, that it's, that it's trainers have given it, and it spits it out in novel ways. But we can't forget that humans are always at the source of this information. Humans actually have some say in how the AI is structured, how it's trained. And so we need to, I think by, by seeing AI as kind of a sentient being in itself, it distracts us from the fact that of who's actually training the AI, which I think is, is a critical question. And there are a lot of big companies who are doing this. Thankfully, I think there's a diverse enough set of companies who are making AI models that we don't have to worry about a mono company like Google taking over the next 20 years. To that point, though, isn't it, isn't it the case that to say AI is a blanket term? Because when you're talking about an LLM, that's one kind of AI. But when you're talking about like full self-driving in a Tesla, mm -hmm. that's not an LLM, but that is artificial intelligence. It's interpreting, it's interpreting the world. It's making decisions based on what it sees, et cetera. Like, so to call, to say, a, to use AI as a blanket term is probably an error. And you can say, you know, the, that LLMs are just, you know, they just crunch the information that they have, that people are feeding it. But when it comes to something like a full self-driving, which would that kind of AI would have to be used if you were to have a robot that was actually working in, in the world, right? Like a humanoid robot. It would have to have something similar to that as well as an LLM. Those two AIs are different, aren't they? And, so, and, and how, do you, how do you make the dis distinction between the, t the multiple types of AIs and, and say, well, this one is actually kind of dumb because it's just crunching words that we said, but this one's actually not kind of dumb because it's interpreting the world outside and, and that's so much more information than just, you know, a data set. So on that point, I Two distinctions to be made there. One, when Shane is speaking, always, as a shaman, Shane is speaking <laughs> from a cosmic point of view. He's seeing not just the thing, but the thing in relation to the room and the stars and so on and so forth in the metaphysical realm beyond. When Bryce and Nathan are talking about artificial intelligence, they're talking about very specific machine learning processes that are for very specific purposes and also very specific to the culture that you're trying to build. Uh, and I think that both of those are valid perspectives. And, and, and I, I think that people using these digital tools for, at least with the intent of benefiting human beings, at least 
the ones who count, right? The ones close to you, uh, then we're probably better off, even if I reject it entirely. But so that's, that's a, I think this is a distinction to be made, right? And it's one of the problems you're talking about AI, right? It's when Shane's talking about the, the kind of parasitic or predatory nature of AI itself, it's a, it's a more cosmic point of view, like looking at the, the long term sort of goal towards which most of these frontier companies are working towards. Um, and and I, I myself think that it's, you have to balance those things. But to, to the point about like AI as a term, it's very unfortunate. I mean, you could call it for a long time, it was machine learning, right? And um, AI, when it was coined, like 1956, uh, John McCarthy, and taken up by others, Marvin Minsky, what they were talking about is what we now call artificial general intelligence. They were just meaning a machine that can think like a human across all of these yeah. different domains. And nothing like that exists. Not really. I mean, you could say the seed forms are present, but th that is just a dream. And it has been a dream for some 70 odd years. So say you take that distinction, though, between the LLM. And I, I, I hear what you're saying as far as it just compressing information, but it does a lot. It's, it's more than just a JPEG. You know, I mean, it's, it lies, it's, it hallucinates. Yeah it's, yeah, it's capable of all sorts of similar to human reasoning. It's not real reasoning. You could go on all day about it. It's not really reasoning. Okay, fine, but it can solve puzzles. Uh, an LLM, which was not really intended for that purpose, uh, is able to solve puzzles, make its way through mazes, can do math. LLMs aren't made to do math. And yet, the as you scale them up... And do math um, better than human beings. It, many, yeah. They, they're yeah. making... They're solving complex problems at, it, at you know, PhD levels. Yeah. Not, well, uh, LLMs, not so much. But yes, uh, they, they do better than the average person. They do is, better than us. If I understand correctly, Grok does that, and, and Grok is an LLM. Uh, right? Yeah, but it's not... I mean, is it better? It's not better than... Uh, a mathematician, you know, uh, whereas specific AIs that are made with math or coding. Actually, there's an example of a kind of generalist uh, tendency in there was a, a math Olympiad that OpenAI got the gold in, right? Their, their algorithm got the gold in. And there was also a, co a coding contest. And it was the same algorithm. If I'm not mistaken, it was trained to do coding, not math. If I could be, I could have that flipped. But one way or the other, it was trained for one purpose. It was able to excel in both. So yes, it is. But it, it is quite different, though, from robotics control or even like image recognition systems. Even if they're more integrated now, like uh, GPT-5. You know, before it was like it was this very rapid transition from these very narrow systems to like Google's Gemini was multimodal. Everybody made a big deal out of it. You have an LLM that's able to kind of reach out and use image tools and use uh, uh, audio kind of tools, right? Like uh, to produce voice and all that. And now it's it's integrated into basically one system over just a course of a few years. And it, I don't think that anytime soon you're going to get the soul of a true genius writer or genius musician or genius painter out of these systems, right? It's just going to be slop for the, at least the near term. But you do have to recognize like what you're talking about, superhuman intelligence, right? Super intelligence, as defined by Nick Bostrom, would include something like Alpha Zero uh, or even Deep, uh, Deep Blue, like back in the yeah. 1970s, beat Gary uh, Kasparov. Kasparov. So you have to take that into account and wonder, at least. I, I think that fantasizing is probably not something to get stuck in. But these fantasies are not only driving the technology, but the technology is living up to some of those fantastic sort of images. So in the case of Alpha Zero, uh, Alpha Go was trained on previous Go moves. Uh, Alpha Zero started from scratch, yep. just the rules, and played against itself until it developed its own strategies and is now basically a, a stone wall that can't be defeated. Yep. Same with uh, at least the best drone piloting systems outperform humans that's um yeah that's, that's kind of a, a a feature and maybe it's an emerging feature but it's a feature of ai once it defeats human beings once it gets better than humans there's never a time where a human never being, loses yeah, that, yeah. He, and, it, and i think that isn't that if that's the goal for you know for these these developers right 
wouldn't those uh, wouldn't that kind of special special uh, specialty and 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 i guess uh it's the word i'm looking for just just that kind of capability isn't that something that you could consider a good thing for the for human humanity right if it's better at finding to the point that we were talking about earlier about finding cancers if it's better than humans ever will be and it always is better and it gets so good that it doesn't miss cancers isn't that a positive for humanity no i don't think so i don't think you can outsource that kind of optimism to this false god and count on that forever uh i think outsourcing so much stuff to the machine will just eliminate humanity and at a certain point in that world there is no more humans well i mean so they'll you be, gotta... be they'll be living in their little 15 minute cities uh hooked up to the metaverse and disease might not even be a thing because they'll be eating vaccine slop so then but so then your your opinion is d the, it's better to have the real world with disease and cancer and everything yeah than... it's part of humanity okay unfortunately it's part know, of the human there's condition. risk out there and once you start to play god uh it goes wrong and uh i don't well think we should well, well i mean there's a line where like we are there's obviously medicine and we're trying to heal people but the idea that you can just plug into the machine and it cures you that's basically just making everyone a transhumanist uh and i don't agree with that but, it, but if people have the option is it really making people a transhumanist now again you you don't have there you become transhumanist by default there are people that don't go to the doctor currently yeah there are people that say i don't want to i mean you've yep. got you've got enclaves of people if they if if that's an option and you're not forced to do any of this stuff isn't isn't the isn't it more immoral to prevent people from having the option than to say that everyone like that everyone no, you know, if you have the option, isn't that the 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 desired outcome where people can make the decision themselves? Yeah, I understand having the option is fine. I just don't think in the not so distant future there won't be an option. So you I, think that it's all just authoritarianism all the way down? It seems to go that way. I mean, I think all these people want total control. They've totally rebranded to be a part of our government right now. And they've not they haven't been before. Well, they, now they're front facing. So would the, you say government. that the Biden administration had the proper uh, the proper? No, because they also because, gave money to Palantir. Well, and other other nefarious operations. They had the cho they the Biden administration selected certain companies, but there was no competition. Wouldn't would you think that the 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 Trump then would you think that the Trump administration's outlook or their their approach is a better approach or do you think that it's just you're just straight up no on it it doesn't matter who's in office because they are parasites silicon valley is parasitic and they take advantage of every administration they're shape-shifting ghouls who will take advantage <laughs> like zuckerberg was all in and totally fine to censor all of us during covid you know and then all of a sudden he saw you know kamala wasn't going to win so hey now he's shape-shifting to maga light you know with a new haircut and a chain on rogan I, I think here it's really important to emphasize the distinction between AI as it currently exists mm -hmm. and what it could become uh, further down the road. And I mean, at least AI as it exists right now, it still obeys and it follows human prompting, right? So it, it is- in To some, our knowledge. In some yeah, sense, not always though. In some sense it is it, it is rational, but it lacks, it lacks will and it lacks agency as of today. But we've seen it try to rewrite itself to avoid being reprogrammed. You know, we've seen it try to, like Phil is saying, developing secret languages to talk. Thanks for watching this clip from the Culture War podcast. We're live every Friday, 10 a.m. to noon. So subscribe and come hang out.